Hello friends, welcome to Unity Essentials video tutorial series. From the past few video tutorials, we are trying to understand Unity assets. In the previous video tutorials, we have already discussed some of the Unity assets. We discussed what is a model, what is a material, what is a shader, what is a texture, how they are related to one another. We also discussed fonts, audio files and scripts. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss prefabs. Prefabs are also Unity assets. What is a prefab? Prefab is a wrapper for a game object. Prefab is a wrapper or a placeholder for a game object. Once you create a prefab, you can create infinite number of instances of it. Once you create a prefab, you can create infinite number of copies of it. Any edits made to a prefab are immediately affected to all of its instances. Instances are linked to prefab. Any modification that you do to a prefab, they are all going to get affected to all of its instances guys. Prefabs are created to reuse game objects in many scenes. Prefab is a way, prefab allows you to reuse game objects in many scenes. That means if you create a game object with lot of functionalities by sitting for 2 to 3 hours and you want that game object in many scenes or in many levels, then you must create a prefab. You create a game object, create a prefab of it and use it in many scenes. Let's have a demonstration and understand. I go to Unity. You can see here first 3D project is open and we have the first scene with the main camera and directional light. Now what I do, I am going to create one create object and I add interactivity to it. Based on the keyboard input, it is going to move to the left, right, up, down. Okay, I'm going to create a create object now. First of all, I'm going to create a cube object here. I say game object, say 3D object, say cube. You can see I have a cube here. Now I'm going to apply a create texture to it. You can see here in the external assets, I have textures folder. Within that I have create underscore texture PNG file. I'm going to drag it to the project panel. You can see I have create underscore texture here. To apply the create underscore texture to the cube here, I'm going to rename it first. I rename it to create C R A T E create. I hit enter. Now to apply this create underscore texture to this create object, I need to create a material. We know that material is also asset. So I go to assets, say create and say material. I name it C R A T E create underscore material. I hit enter. You can see the material is created. Now I am going to drag this create underscore texture to the albedo property. You can see the texture is applied to the material and then I need to drag the material on top of create. You can see now the create has the texture applied. That's what we do. If I click on the play button, you can see create is available and uh, I am going to add interactivity to it. To add interactivity or behavior, we know that we take help of scripts. Scripts are behavioral components, right? So what I do, I go to assets, I say create, I say C sharp script and I name it as create underscore mover. I hit enter. You can see create underscore mover dot CS file is created. Next, whatever the code that we write inside create underscore mover should get effect to create means I need to add this script as a component to a create, right? I select the create object. I go to component. I say scripts. I select create underscore mover. You can see create underscore mover script is added as a component to the create. Now whatever code we write inside this create underscore mover are going to affect to this create. I double click on the create underscore mover dot CS file. It is going to get open inside the mono develop. We know that mono develop is the inbuilt script editor. I'm going to select these two lines of code, say delete. We understood what is this code in the previous video tutorial. We know that update is going to be called once per frame continuously. It is going to get executed repeatedly, right? So here I can write the code for interactivity. I say if input dot get key, key code dot left arrow, opening floor bracket, closing floor bracket. What I am telling here, if I am pressing the left arrow key, then this 
game object transform dot position should be equal to this dot transform dot position plus new vector three. I'm going to move to the left. So I say here negative three f comma. It should not move in y axis, so zero f. It should not move in z axis, so zero f. Then I say multiplied by time dot delta time semicolon. What this line of code indicates, guys? Take the current position, add these values to x, y, and z. Apply that as a new value to this position. We are telling here when I press the left arrow key, move the crate left side. Minus means negative means left side. Three units per second. Time dot delta time means per second. Now I am going to save it. File save. Go to Unity. I am going to click on the play button. Once I click on the play button, you see game is going to get play. And if I press the left arrow key, you see crate is moving towards left. Similarly, I can add for right arrow key. I am going to copy this code, paste down, and here I say key code dot right arrow. If I press the right arrow key, then crate should move towards right. Positive means towards right. Three units per second. I say file save. Go to Unity. I click on the play button. Now, if I press the left arrow key, crate moves towards left. If I press the right arrow key, crate moves towards right. Like that, I can write the code for up and down arrow key. I am going to copy these codes and paste down. Here I say dot dot up arrow, and we know that we should not move in x axis. So here I say zero f. Y axis should be three f. For then I say here dot down arrow. If I press the down arrow key, x should be zero, y should be minus three. I say file, save, go to Unity, and then I click on this play button. You can see now I can go to the left, to the right. I can move the crate upward, downward. Now I have created a game object that is a crate with some functionality. I'm going to save this scene. I say file, save scenes. I want this crate in many scenes now, in different levels. At present, I'm going to create one new scene. I say file, new scene. Once I say new scene, you don't see that crate game object here. I want that crate game object here also. What I have to do, guys? As I told, I have to create a prefab. Now what I do? I'm going to save this scene. I say file, save scene as. I say second scene. I say save. You can see second scene is available. Now I go back to the first scene. Here I have the crate. Now for this crate, I need to create a prefab so that I can use it in many scenes or many levels. To create a prefab, I go to assets, say create. I say prefab, and I name this as crate underscore prefab, or I can just give crate. I hit enter. I told you that. Prefab is a wrapper for a game object or a placeholder for a game object. So what I do here, I drag this crate to this prefab. Now the crate is inside prefab. So prefab is wrapping your crate object. It is an asset. I can use this asset in many scenes now or in many levels. Now, as I told, I want that in the next scene. I am going to double click on the second scene. I say save the first scene. Now I am going to drag this crate underscore prefab. Once I drag the crate underscore prefab, you can see it has created an instance. I just rename it to just crate. I hit enter. So here we have the crate, guys. If I click on the play button, I have a crate. If I press the left arrow key, it moves to the left, right. If I press the up arrow key, it goes upward. If I press the down arrow key, it goes downward. You can see that with the help of prefab, I can create many instances, guys. And I can use a game object, reuse a game object in many scenes. If I want, I can create one more scene, and I can drag this prefab in that scene also to create one more crate. Now I'm going to put all these things in one folder. I say right click, create a folder. I say here crate, and I drag all these four elements inside this crate folder. So here we have the crate folder. Inside the crate folder, we have The create prefab, create texture, create material, and create underscore mover C sharp file. They are all linked to one another, guys. I hope you guys have clearly understood what is a prefab and how prefabs are used 
to reuse game objects in many scenes or many levels. I suggest you people to watch this video again and again, understand everything clearly. Try yourself guys, in the upcoming video tutorials, we get more information on Unity assets. I think for this video tutorial, this much is enough guys. For more benefits and be up to date, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys, thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.